Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 NCAA Selection Show for Division I Women's Soccer. I'm Brendan Gulick. It is great to be with you as we prepare to open up this year's national tournament. We had some amazing conference tournaments this past weekend, some epic late game comebacks, and a number of pretty wild upsets that make this time of year just so much fun. Florida State, of course, the defending national champion, had a great run last year, and they are absolutely capable of defending that national championship. But North Carolina, UCLA, Alabama, Stanford, Notre Dame, several other heavyweights that could really threaten the Seminoles at the top. This is the best time of year for 64 teams that are about to find out that they've been invited to play in this year's national tournament. We have 31 automatic bids that we're gonna hand out to conference champions, but there are 33 spots available for the best remaining teams in the nation. Now, some teams are pretty relaxed today, but there are certainly some nervous teams around the country wondering, did we get in? It won't be much longer. You'll find out really soon. A couple of quick housekeeping notes, though, before we get started. For the 10th time, this year's College Cup will be held at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Semifinals are December 2nd, and the championship game will be on December 5th. Tournament opens this weekend on campus sites, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The winners will play the following weekend. Then the quarterfinals are set for Thanksgiving weekend. Spots in the College Cup on the line early December after that. Make sure you check NCA.com. You, uh, you could also check your favorite team's website for all the broadcast and streaming information. But of course, the College Cup semis and final will be televised live on ESPNU. Okay, it's time to unveil the bracket. And we're going to begin with one of the favorites to win the whole thing, the Florida State Seminoles. ACC champions three-peated this weekend at a 2-1 win at North Carolina. It was the Seminoles' ninth ACC championship in the last 12 years. In fact, the Garnet and Gold have won the ACC title match now each of the last nine times that they've played in it. The match was also Clara Robbins' 105th match played during her career, which puts her atop the record book for career games played at Florida State. FSU looking for its fourth national championship after beating BYU in the title game last year. They'll open the tournament with in-state foe, Florida Gulf Coast, who took the auto bid out of the A-Sun. They beat Liberty in penalties last weekend to win the conference title. Lamar gets an auto bid. They're having a great year, losing only once over 18 games in route to winning the Southland title. Lamar is going to head down the road to play a team that was squarely on the bubble today, but it's time to take a big, deep breath. Down in Baton Rouge, LSU back in the field. The Tigers only lost three times in 19 games. All three were really high quality teams. They'll play Lamar Friday evening. The five seed in this region is Georgetown, who won the Big East by beating Xavier on Sunday, one to nothing. Hoyas haven't lost a game now in over 10 weeks. They'll welcome Hofstra to town Saturday afternoon after they won the CAA tournament for the second year in a row and the fifth time in the last six years. Buffalo gets a bid after winning its second MAC championship in program history, as well as their second NCAA invitation. With the win over Ball State, the Bulls extended their program record unbeaten streak to 17 matches, closed out the season with an 11-0-1 record at home. Bulls also recorded their 14th shutout of the year, matching the 2014 MAC championship squad for the best in program history. They got a Saturday night showdown in the Steel City. Pittsburgh, who's back in the field after a great year that included wins in 11 of its first 12 games. They haven't played in about a week or so now. That means they're going to be really fresh and ready to prove they're ready for a deep tournament run. Arkansas back in the NCAA tournament after last year's Elite Eight run, comfortably making the field with an RPI inside the top 10 at the end of the year. Razorbacks played a really tough schedule outside of SEC play and they have certainly been playing well. They posted eight clean sheets in a nine match stretch beginning in late September. They're a three seed and they will host MVC champion Missouri State on Friday evening. It's the Bears third MVC title and first trip back to the NCAA tournament since 2017. Bucknell won the Patriot League this year beating Army in penalties on Sunday. So this is their sixth trip to the tournament in program history. They got a tough game on the road Friday night. Bucknell is traveling to Columbus to play the Ohio State Buckeyes. Just might have the fastest and most dangerous offense in the Big Ten this year. And now they'll get to showcase it on a national stage. Buckeyes are in the field as an at-large. 
Scarlet and Gray have had a couple of really tough games against the best teams in the Big Ten over the last few weeks, but seven straight results during the heart of conference play, enough to convince the committee that they belonged in this field. Mississippi State comes back to the tournament after a great turnaround this year. Bulldogs were 5-8-3 last fall. They've turned it into an 11-5-4 season so far this year. They're ready for a great tournament test. They're going to host a conference champion out of the whack. It's New Mexico State who pulled off a great win over Utah Valley in the conference title game. The Aggies have been fantastic over the last month, and they are back in the field. Last two teams in this quadrant are Memphis and St. Louis. The Tigers won the American Athletic Conference title, beating SMU 1-0 in double overtime. And they're traveling to play the 2022 Atlantic 10 champion who are making their fifth straight league championship. They pounded Dayton 4-0 to beat the Flyers for an 11th straight time, although it was their first ever meeting in a league final. Billikens lead the country in scoring this year, averaging over three goals per game. They also boast one of the top five defenses nationally. To the bottom left of the bracket we go, where North Carolina gets an at-large out of the ACC after a great season and a terrific conference championship game that ultimately saw them fall just a little bit short. No matter, Anson's got his team ready for another run to carry as they're looking for an unprecedented 31st appearance in the College Cup. Tar Heels start things by hosting Old Dominion Saturday night. ODU won the Sunbelt Conference thanks to Carla Morich. She finished off her hat trick in the 106th minute of the conference title game to win in overtime. Welcome to the tournament to the Samford Bulldogs, who are the SOCON winners this year. Sophomore goalie Emma Danley won tournament MVP honors. She's going to have her hands full. She's got the Georgia Bulldogs on Friday night. Georgia lost to South Carolina in PKs in the SEC tournament. But the Bulldogs have a great resume, and they're back in as an at-large selection. BYU made a magical run through the tournament last year, and they are so eager for a chance to change their fate this time around. Of course, the Cougars get an at-large bid this season after their offense shined brightly this fall. They lead the country in shots per game. They are top 20 in several other offensive categories. BYU is going to host Utah Valley, who lost the WAC tournament title game to New Mexico State. The Wolverines have been invited anyways to play in this year's national field. San Jose State won the Mountain West this fall. They're making a short trip to Pac-12 champion Stanford. The Cardinal won the league tournament in PKs over Cal, marking their 10th league title under Paul Ratcliffe, marked the 15th conference championship in program history, and their first since 2019, making their 31st all-time appearance in the NCAA tournament. And they've got a top 10 offense that will quite literally shoot from anywhere. Is there a better feel-good story around the NCAA this year than Michigan State? Sparty gets an at-large berth after falling in the Big Ten championship match to Penn State on Sunday, but don't let that ruin an otherwise incredible season from the Spartans. They were the regular season champions in the league. Jeff Hostler's done an outstanding job turning around a program that was consistently at the bottom of the league, and he's turned them into a legitimate national power in just a couple years' time. Keep your eyes on Lauren Dubow and Justina Gaynor, among others, during this national tournament. MSU staying home in East Lansing. They're going to play Milwaukee, the 2022 Horizon League champions. Five in a row now for the Panthers, who beat Youngstown State this weekend. Conference USA champion UTSA this year. Kind of cool for them. It's their final year in the league, and the Roadrunners are leaving with a splash as they earn the very first conference championship since they joined Conference USA back in 2013. They will head to the NCAA tournament for the second time in program history, the first time since 2010. UTSA heads to TCU, who earned the five seed this year. They're back with an at-large berth from the Big 12. The Horned Frogs lost in overtime to West Virginia in that conference championship game. But Eric Bell's teams played a really challenging schedule, and they'll be ready for anything this coming weekend. Thanks to a nice come from behind win, Santa Clara, the West Coast Conference champs this year. They beat Pepperdine 2-1 Saturday for their third straight league title. Make it 13 uh, trips now to the big dance for the Broncos. They're the eighth seed in the bottom left, and they are going to host Cal. At large bid off the board here as Cal finished the regular season fourth in the Pac-12 
but they had a great RPI, a solid SOS to boost that resume, and their best win of the year may have come in a great win over Santa Clara in September. Two more teams on this side. Omaha won the Summit League. It's their first time they've ever done that and their first trip to the NCAA tournament. They got a tough draw. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish in the first round will host Omaha in South Bend. The Irish taking that large bid out of the ACC. They lost the conference semis to Florida State, but man, it was a match we won't soon forget. Down 2-1 at the half. The Irish rallied behind an incredible performance from ACC Midfielder of the Year, Corbin Albert. They took a 3-2 lead. Albert recorded her first career hat trick with three spectacular goals. She continues to make quite the case in winning the Mac Herman Trophy. 11 goals scored over the final eight games of the season. Okay, time for a quick break. Don't go anywhere though. We've still got the second half of the bracket. It's coming up after this quick timeout on NCAA.com. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Welcome back, everybody. We've, of course, filled out 32 of the 64 spots in our bracket. That means it's time to move from the left to the right-hand side. And so we go to the top right corner where it features one of the nation's absolute best teams, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama lost the SEC title game to South Carolina, but they're comfortably in the tournament this year after an incredible season. Crimson Tide finished as the SEC tournament runner-up for just the second time in program history and the first time since 1995. Wes Hart and company building something really special in Tuscaloosa. They got almost three goals per game, so you better bring it. You're going to knock out the Tide. They will host the SWAC champions, Jackson State, in the first round Friday night in Tuscaloosa. Arizona State back in the field for the second time in three years after they wrapped up the season by beating Arizona last weekend. They're traveling the opening weekend. They're going to head to play a team that was likely one of the last teams in the field this year. The Portland Pilots are dancing. Pilots dropped four of their last six games but they did enough through the beginning of the season to convince the committee that they belonged in this year's field. After last year's Final Four run, Rutgers has a target on its back. They've had it all year, but the Scarlet Knights get an at-large bid from the Big Ten after yet another solid season. Their 13-4-2 record doesn't quite feel as impressive when you consider that they started 9-0, but the Big Ten was as tough this year as it's been at any point in recent memory. And Rutgers is trying to get healthy because they know what they're capable of doing after last year's incredible ride. They're hanging out in Piscataway this weekend, and they're going to play the Brown Bears, who are the Ivy League champions for a third straight season. They drilled Springfield 7-2 last weekend, punctuated a great campaign. Brown is the second highest scoring offense in the country. Big West champion UC Irvine back in after back-to-back -back titles out west. They roughed up Long Beach State this past weekend to clinch that AQ bid. They won't have a particularly long commute for the opening round game. They are heading north to play USC. The Trojans will compete in the national tournament. They had a great season, but not much could have topped their huge win over crosstown rival and top-ranked UCLA on Friday. That win ended UCLA's hopes of a Pac-12 title and was USC's first over UCLA since 2015. The Trojans are not a fluke. They've beaten four ranked teams this year, and they are ready to prove it in the weeks to come. Speaking of USC, let's go across the country. Welcome back to the field to the SEC champion, South Carolina. No drama for them this afternoon. They know they're in. They had a great tournament, and they handed Alabama its first SEC loss of the season. Heather Hines was named tournament MVP after the Gamecocks took home their third league title. Gamecocks, one win away from the trip to the College Cup last year. A very nervous wait for Wake Forest is over. The Demon Deacons are in. This is their 22nd appearance in the national tournament, and they're playing the Gamecocks on Saturday night. New Hampshire Wildcats beat Binghamton and PKs to win the America East title Sunday, so they're in the field this year. 
traveling to Cambridge. They're going to play Harvard, who blitzed Columbia Friday to complete its first undefeated Ivy League season since 2016. They finished the regular season 11-1-3, get an at-large bid this year after posting one of the top 10 best offensive seasons in team history. Texas brings its high-powered offense back to the national tournament. They get an at-large bid from the Big 12 after a 14-2-4 campaign, and they're going to host a team that is probably feeling a little uneasy about their postseason life right now. Time to celebrate in College Station. Texas A&M is in. The Aggies and the Longhorns will meet in Austin Friday night in the first round. Radford won its eighth Big South tournament title this weekend. They beat Gardner-Webb to punch their ticket. Fifth straight shutout victory for the Highlanders, who battled to make the postseason, battled to make the championship match, and didn't let up on the biggest stage of the season. They'll play one of the top-seeded teams this year, the Duke Blue Devils, who are in the national tournament for the 28th time in program history. They get an at-large this season out of the ACC. Blue Devils played the toughest schedule in America, and they fared pretty darn well, routinely appearing in the top 10. Michelle Cooper, Cat Raider combined for 24 goals and both took home ACC honors this past week. 16 spots left to fill. We go to the bottom right corner of the bracket where the number two seed in this region is the Big Ten tournament champion, the Penn State Nittany Lions. They beat the Spartans at Lower.com Field in Columbus on Sunday to win yet another Big Ten title. Nittany Lions continue to be the program by which all other big teams have been measured, winning their ninth tournament championship. Ali Schlegel and Kat Osmond ready to bring home some more hardware to Happy Valley. They'll entertain Quinnipiac after they beat Niagara to win the MAAC title. Welcome back to the Bobcats. They have not been to the NCAA tournament since 2000. Virginia Tech on the board. The Hokies ended the year on a sour note, but they'll have a chance to rewrite that script this week with an at-large berth to the tournament. They got a pretty tough test. They're heading to Morgantown, where West Virginia is still partying after earning its fifth Big 12 tournament title this past weekend. It's their first championship as a program since 2018, but it's also their eighth conference, I should say their 18th conference championship in the last 27 years. This is the 22nd appearance for West Virginia in the NCAA tournament in the last 23 seasons. Tennessee gets an invitation back to the field after a really good year under first year head coach Joe Kurt. Lady Vols get off to a shaky start with three losses, but followed it with nine wins in their next 10 games. They will welcome Xavier to Knoxville. Xavier, the runner up in the Big East this year. It's an at large berth for the Musketeers, whose defense has been their calling card. They're allowing roughly three goals every five games played. NEC champion Fairleigh Dickinson in. They had a great run through the league tournament, and they're hoping to prove that they're not just hot at the right time, but primed for an upset over a very good Virginia team. Virginia bowed out in the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament, but Steve Swanson's team is the real deal. They are physical, they're tough, they got some big wins on their resume already after beating Duke and Carolina in the regular season. They're hosting field hockey and women's soccer in Evanston this weekend. Northwestern is in the tournament. Wildcats get an at-large bid from the Big Ten, put together their best season since 2016. Looking back on their non-conference schedule now at the end of the year, man, they racked up a, a bunch of really good wins against some other teams in this field. Northwestern has Ohio Valley Conference champion SIUE on Saturday afternoon. The Cougars won the OVC for a third year in a row. Fifth D1 tournament appearance for them. Derek Burton continues to build a great program. Crunch time here for a couple of schools. Vanderbilt, the last of the SEC teams that were unveiling, but that doesn't mean they were the last ones selected. It's been a long, nervous wait for the Commodores this afternoon, but their 11-4-4 season and solid strength of schedule, enough to convince the selection committee that they deserve the spot this season. Vandy's going on the road. They're going to play the Clemson Tigers, who earn a bid to the field for the ninth year in a row with an at-large out of the ACC. Tigers will host that first round game Friday afternoon at three o'clock. Last four spots here. NC State isn't exactly surging coming into the tournament. They've won only once in their last nine matches, 
but the selection committee liked him enough to put him in. He got an at-large bid from the ACC with a record of 7-7-5. Seven, seven, and five. Turns out they're also hosting this weekend, and they're going to host another nervous team, UCF. Take a deep breath. You're in the field. Back again this year, the Knights 9-2-5 overall. They didn't lose a game in the American Athletic Conference, but ultimately were eliminated in PKs by Memphis in the conference tournament. Our last conference champion in the field is Northern Arizona. They won the Big Sky for the first time in program history this weekend, beat Idaho to win the title. And they've won 10 straight games coming into the tournament. Their reward, big bad UCLA Bruins. UCLA earns an at-large berth from the Pac-12 after a fabulous season. Bruins are 17-2, clearly one of the best offenses in the country. They came up short against USC for the first time in seven years on Friday. Still, they should be a really tough out in the national tournament. UCLA has outscored teams 53-9, and they've rarely played from behind all season. All right, there you have it. The 64 teams that make up our 2022 National Championship bracket. We can't wait to get this postseason started this Friday. We're going to work toward crowning our national champion in Cary. Hey, if you can get out and support your local schools, please make an effort. Go out and see them in person. It's been so much fun to watch the student athletes enjoy playing in front of big crowds, both during the conference tournaments this year and certainly in national tournaments in years past. We'd love to see you support them as they chase a national championship. That wraps up our coverage this afternoon on NCAA.com. Again, I'm Brendan Gulick. Keep it locked here for all the latest news and information during the tournament, including host sites and game times. Good luck to all 64 teams competing in the playoffs. We hope to see you at the 2022 College Cup. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.